So you can see that DWR coating uh, on this nylon rainfly. It's, it's doing quite well. Water just rolls right off, runs off. Okay, let's take a look inside. Okay, we have the Hike and Bike Zion 2P and just did the weigh-in a few minutes ago. It's six pounds and a few ounces. Oh yeah, look at that, 99.8 ounces with the stuff sack, all the pieces, and that is 200 and, or 2,836 grams, six pounds, four ounces. So it's a little on the heavy side, but I'm gonna take it outside and torture test it. Uh, the pack size is not real small for motorcycle use. Uh, the thing I do like is that the length is short. So the poles, they've got a single hubbed pole in here that we're gonna dig out in just a minute. And that is uh, hinged in several places, so it allows the uh, pole sections to be smaller. So that's good, the, the very compact length. I'll take measurements of it later, but uh, it's definitely under 20 inches, which is kind of a consideration for motorcycle camping uh, to be able to fit into panniers and that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't have any compression straps uh, on the bag internally or on this, uh, you know, carry bag. I wouldn't even, I guess it's a stuff sack, but I wouldn't call it a uh, compression bag because that's not what it is. Um, so anyway, this is first unboxing for me. Uh, I haven't, haven't gotten into it other than just to open the package and see how it was uh, wrapped up inside, but I haven't even unhooked the straps. So I'm going to take it out here and get wet. Uh, and I'm cheating a little bit. Uh, staging everything here under my gazebo, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be out here in the wet. It's coming down about, I don't know, inch an hour right now, maybe inch and a half, something like that. So I'm going to try to do the uh, cheating way of setting it up, which is uh, a dry pitch where you lay out your uh, ground cloth and your fly first and uh, get those up before you try to uh, do the tent body. That way the tent stays dry inside, hopefully dry. So I've got to figure out which pieces are which here. That feels like the ground sheet. Uh, so they've got everything separately packaged. Uh, they have the little ground cloth uh, in its own little zip bag. That's kind of nice. One more thing to carry, but you know, it's nice for organizational purposes. So let's see what we got here. Guess I should rearrange this slightly. So I just got to camp and it's raining and gotta set it up and try to keep the innards dry. Let's see how well I did. Got the uh, DWR type coating on the ground sheet here. You know, and I can never remember, is it uh, the DWR side down or DWR side up? I usually do it down. In this case, it has uh, the adjusters. Uh, those need to be facing up, obviously, so that means the DWR is going to be facing the ground. Now, the pole kit is uh, in its own stuff back and it's uh gonna oh no that's not good the line lock came right off i guess i need to tie a better knot in the end of that slid right off i'll fix that later so how have we got them packaged in here i'm gonna set this stuff down there so i don't lose it okay so here's the uh polar arrangement and uh i'm gonna see how this goes <laughs> Look at that erector set. Origami on steroids here. What do we got? Well, that was quick. Ooh, that was quick. Now it's getting length to it, so I'm fighting with it. Hey! Okay, well, that was easy. Big stick frame, okay. And I'm assuming I've got it right side up, upside down. Yeah, the center pole is going to be facing downward. So here we go. Try to keep the 
tent as dry as possible. It's still rolled up. So the water is going to be beating up on the bathtub floor section. Let's figure out what head, foot, front, back, all that is. Okay, there's a door. Let's get the logo facing that way. Now oh, they got logos on both sides. Good. Okay, so let's see if I can uh, get lucky on the first try here. That is correct this way. Okay. So I'm just going to pre clip the uh, fly into here. It's raining pretty good out here. Okay, that side's up. Now let's uh, give it some altitude, shall we? All right. I like the uh, the hub to pole here no real assembly to it other than just snapping the uh, shock corded sections together. It's good. Okay, so now the uh, the footprint is certainly soaked through, but not a problem. The bathtub floor works as it's supposed to. Okay. So there's the initial portion of the shelter. You guys can't see my side of it because I couldn't say my, or I couldn't find my uh, chest rig this morning. <laughs> I was gonna get up earlier, try to get out ahead of the storm, but it didn't work out. I need to reach in here and set the uh, central pole. There it goes. And I've got to find the, uh, let me see the little hook for that. Where's that? Interesting. So that hook, well, that's a little bit of an oversight, maybe. I'm just not seeing it yet. Uh, there's no ferrule or attachment point for the ridge pole on the fly itself. So if you wanted to do a uh, fast and light config, uh, you just kind of have to hope for the best on that placement because there's not a spot to secure it. I'm fumbling through the zippers and the Velcro here. This is my first setup on a tent. I've heard decent things about this. And I can see that the zipper has spread here in the center. It's not quite synced up, but seem to be re-threading themselves okay. Alright, so there we go. Yeah, there's no ferrule uh, at the center of the uh, fly to hold that up. It's unfortunate. It would have been a nice thing to add. That way you could use this in a uh, thin configuration for the trail. So, roll this up. The DWR on this... Uh, Rainfly is very good. Water is just speeding off of it. I don't mean rolling off. I mean it's like running. That's great. Yeah, the zippers are uh, kind of off track in several places, but they're re-threading very well, which is a good thing. Uh, hitchy, sticky zippers on camping gear, especially tents. Oh, that is such a pain in the butt when they don't rethread and they don't work because then you're left getting wet or mosquitoes getting in or one thing or another high quality zippers are very very important okay so now we got our tunnel and a wet tent but again i left it folded up to where the tent body is inside bathtub floor facing outside. I have no idea which one is up or down, or front or back, or 
head or foot, but we're going to find out. Apologize for not having the uh, chest rig. It'd be nice to see first person, wouldn't it? Okay, so I am definitely right side up. That's good. I see one ridge clip. I see center clips. Looking for the other ridge clip. There are the two ridge clips. So I'm going to have to put those in now. To give me some form on this. Yeah. Would have been so easy to just add uh, two more little clips on there. Just for on the fly, that way this could uh, have a little bit better support. Okay, so, yeah, tent body got a little wet uh, on the mesh, but that's okay. I'll dry it out with a towel in a few minutes, and then we'll uh, see how it fares for water resistance over today's rain event, which is going to be a while, I think. Supposed to have rain most of the day, which again is why I wanted to do this. The tent uh, pole ends, uh, the ferrules are very generously long, so there's no problem with uh, getting the fly and the tent eyes on there. That's nice. Some of them are a little short, and you're fighting for space to get both the, the fly hook and the, uh, the tent body hook in there at the same time. So, I don't know how far in I am on the uh, setup time here, but probably 10 minutes. Just fumbling through my first time. It's a very easy tent to set up. No drama. Really, really simple. For a budget tent, it's not bad. I'm going to stake the back here. Or not stake it, but zip it down. Yeah, I might stake it. Well, I'll show off their... Uh, claim to fame that they uh, have been advertising about this, which is the uh, stake pusher. Uh, it's a little aluminum disc that you use to push in your tent stakes without the need of a hammer, which is kind of cool. Neat idea. This is the uh, bag of tent stakes and probably, yep, I feel that aluminum disc in there. so. Let's get it open. So the tent stakes and all the uh, hardware here feels pretty lightweight. Uh, it's not heavy at all. Let's see how many pieces I've got in there. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. Pardon the grass. Uh, we've got a lot of stakes. I don't even know how many. I think it's 10 or 11 stakes. I'll count them out as I go forward just for the sake of... Uh, time here but uh, yeah it's just a machined aluminum disc they're a little tent stake pusher and the tent stake fits right in the base uh, of this hole so you can push on it it's kind of cool give it a shot Super easy. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, this is soft ground, but that's pretty easy. <clears throat> I'll get cocky here and hit one of my sprinkler lines. Hey, why can't I go any further? Yeah, that would do it. And here I'm staking the... Uh, the ground sheet not the tent body because I want to be able to cinch that up uh, they've got loops on the uh, tent body and the, the rain fly so I guess you could do either one let's get this thing pulled down for the camera sure wish I had my chest rig Now, if this were really out in the woods uh, and I was setting up in the rain, I would be sure to stake this part of the vestibule out, the fly, 
before I started putting the tent together and I would be hiding inside that, you know, to keep everything dry, including myself. But you know, obviously for the camera, a little different arrangement. I do like that they included uh, little uh, lines on all of the tie outs. Uh, a lot of tents don't include that. Uh, you end up you know, making your own or whatever. Uh, it's a pretty good idea. Nice feature. Again, not hard to modify a gear when you get it, but it's nice if it comes pretty much ready to deploy. Especially if you're a first timer or not very experienced in uh, modifying your gear. It's nice to be able to just pick it up and go and have some reasonable assurance that it's going to work for you. So yeah, there we go. And of course they've got additional guy outs uh, all over the place uh, on the fly for ventilation and you know, wind resistance and that sort of thing. So yeah, this might actually do okay if it's if tied out. It's got more tie outs than my REI Half Dome 2 Plus. And I, I like that. Opening up the little uh, vents here. It doesn't have peak vents, which is probably a good idea. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to affect the uh, breathability. So, there we go. Hoping you're still on camera. 22 minutes in. Of course, I'm going to condense this. Didn't want to take my camera out in the uh, water because I've got a uh, microphone sitting on top of it, but stick it out there anyway, right as it starts to pour rain. <laughs> so you can see that DWR coating uh, on this nylon rain fly. It's, it's doing quite well. Water just rolls right off, runs off. Runs, runs. So, take you inside in a minute. And we'll see uh, kind of how things look. Okay, let's take a look inside. Doing this one-handed. Chest rig will be easy. Chest rig will be easy. Why make it easy? So we've got uh, double zippers up or down. It got wet, of course, because I was setting up in the rain here, but once inside, uh, shouldn't be too bad. So of course I've got water all over the floor in here. The side has been open and, you know, I've been playing around. So I'll go inside and grab a towel, dry the floor of this out, and we'll see how it does. But for now, you can see uh, it's pretty roomy. It's quite roomy. So. We got a lantern hook up here. Um, we've got additional hooks. That's kind of cool. I don't know what that's all about? Oh, that's probably for the gear loft, which I have. It's wet sitting over there. Uh, I'll hook that up in here in just a second. But we've got looks like four four little uh, rings here to pop toggles into for the gear loft. That's cool. Uh, lantern hook. Uh, looks like we've got pockets in each of the corners. Uh, all four corners, yes, we do. Uh, we've got additional little loops here to uh, tie up your door, you know, roll it up and throw that toggle through it so you can go open air. Um, yeah. See some loose string hanging here. Oh, yeah, it's just loose. Okay, no problem. I thought maybe it was torn, but no, it's just a uh, manufacturing failure to clean up. That's okay. So yeah, all the stitching looks okay so far. I can't really make any determinations until I use it a bit. But uh, yeah. So I'm gonna try to leave the camera alone here and go grab a dry towel for inside. I'm gonna mop up this floor and yeah, see how it does. So we're supposed to get two or three inches of rain at least today, so let's see how this thing does. Okay, dry towel to the rescue. So I'm going to mop this up here. Get it as dry as possible. And then we'll do a little comparison after a few hours and see if the fly 
has done its job on the bathroom uh, bathtub floor as well because uh, we're going to be sitting in some water here in the grass now the ground sheet underneath the tent body is definitely wet okay i think i'm about as dry as we can get we're finding a lot of little chunks of uh, fabric and string that are loose in here i saw a couple of other people on amazon mention that uh, the stitching was a little substandard but it looks to be okay to me just you know a little cleanup flashings and stuff that didn't get pulled out of here looks okay okay so the floor is as dry as i can get it i would say 99.9 percent .9%. don't see any drips anywhere yet the inside of the fly should have been dry, or as dry as I could uh, keep it while setting up in the rain, obviously. And here comes the rain. So we'll see. I'm going to leave you alone. Set you at a different perspective. And you get to listen to the rain. So it's about uh, three or four hours later, and we've had quite a bit of rain, probably three inches of rain, two and a half or so. It's coming down pretty heavy off and on. Uh, the hike and bike tent has been sitting out here. I've gotten in it a couple times. I had to grab the camera out and the tripod to get something else done. So there may be a little bit of water in here from when I got in to uh, swap things out. But man, you can see how well that DWR coating works. Look at that. Just beading up and running off of there. It looks like there might be a little bit of soak through here. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. So I've got some soaked spots where it looks like the waterproof coating isn't quite rolling it off and it's soaked into the fabric a bit. But it's uh, treated on the inside as well so I don't think it will have gotten in. Let's uh, roll this up and look underneath it. Hopefully you guys will be able to see from your perspective and the lighting and all that. So we've got water all over it, but nothing inside. No, it's dry. So the, uh, the rainfly seems to have done its job. So I got in and out a couple times, and uh, there's a little bit of water right here at the entry, but that's my fault. Let's look more toward the middle where the important stuff should be dry. Uh, that's where I have not been. Uh, it looks like we've got a little bit of floor soak here, but it's uh, more condensation. Yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see my finger marks, it's condensation that's building up just because of the cold ground underneath. So, uh, yeah, it looks like this has fared well. That Those drops were me uh, when I was getting in and out. So, yeah, it looks like uh, it's dry in here. Pretty, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 we got a problem. Uh, I spoke too soon. See the pool of water over here? So very wet here, and that's been sealed closed. I haven't gotten into that side. So there's a leak somewhere. I don't know where, but there's definitely a leak somewhere because that's, that's a significant amount of water, and I dried this thing completely out. So where could that have come from? Well, I think we're going to have more rain today, so... I'm going to dry it out again with a towel and uh, see if this side over here gets wet again. If it does, then it's got to be coming from the fly somewhere. None of this appears to be wet, but it's been sitting here a little while. So let's, uh, let's give it another chance before we say not waterproof. But that's, that's quite a bit of water there. Okay, so as you can tell, it's pretty, uh, pretty soggy out here. This is my dog's uh, spot where she lays, and I, <laughs> there's just a, 
a depression here where she always uh, hangs out. So, yeah, we've gotten some water. Uh, this is about three inches of rain that we've had this morning. Uh, now, I've just finished totally drying out the interior uh, with a fresh towel. So, let's see if I can get you guys in here with me. Uh, you can see I got a little bit of grass in here, but uh, the tent floor is 100% dry and there's no residual water, you know, hanging out up here that's about to drip down. So, uh, we've got another storm cell or, you know, uh, tracking rain that's about to hit us in another 15 or 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to start off with this thing totally sealed up, zipped up, storm ready, and, uh, let's see how well it does. doing my tent torture test today and uh, we've got quite a bit of uh, <laughs> wind and crazy weather going on we got branches down in our front yard here from our pine trees and uh, yeah uh, we've had a few very big uh, 40 plus mile an hour gusts come ripping through here I think I got some of that on camera out there in the tent but yeah it's a uh, interesting weather day in Houston <laughs> branches down everywhere we're gonna have a bunch of those uh, throughout the neighborhood. Okay, so we haven't had a, a lot of heavy rain uh, since I cleaned up the floor that last time. But we've had a lot of crazy wind. <laughs> I think I recorded some of that. Uh, we've had 45 mile an hour winds blowing through the area. Tree branches are down everywhere. Luckily, nothing on top of this tent. Um, so it's cold, it's windy. I'm gonna hang out out here. Uh, we may have some more rain coming at us in about 30 minutes or so, and I'm just gonna hang out to uh, test this thing out, see how it is in the, uh, get out of here, mosquito. Um, see how things are in the wind. Now, what I can tell you is this is gonna be a, uh, a cooler tent. Uh, it's not gonna be suitable for winter time uh, because Till uh, at the ends down here, but the bathtub floor is only about uh, what is this? Maybe three and a half, four inches tall from the ground, and the rest of it's mesh everywhere. So it's going to flow a pretty good amount of air for warmer climates, but uh, in the winter time, mm -mm, you'll get uh, you'll get frozen out because the coverage of the fly uh, leaves quite a bit of space uh, at the edges, the ends. So. It'll be a little chilly for colder weather, so this is a, I'd rate it as about a two and a half season tent. Not quite three season. So, I'm going to throw my uh, climate uh, insulated static V recon uh, down on the floor in here. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, blow this thing up real quick. 
to give me something to lay on, and I'm just going to hang out. Read a book. Uh, my Kindle up here, so I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. So now in typical tent maker fashion these days, uh, this is rated as a two-person tent, but <laughs> you better really like that other person. Uh, I usually get two-man tent for uh, just me, and then i got room to put my gear inside uh, if I don't want to leave it sitting outside under the vestibule. Uh, I'll pick you up for a moment here and show you. Well, you can probably see. Let me just get out of the way. So, floor space. You could get two of these single-person uh, sleeping pads side-by-side side in here, but that means you're shoving it all the way over to the side and you're into the mesh, which means you know, you're going to have potential for bugs nipping at you through the mesh or one thing or another. So, usually I sleep kind of one-third in, uh, and that gives me enough room to where the mesh isn't blowing in on me. Waking me up in the middle of the night, that sort of thing. Uh, mm. <laughs> Move this camera away from the uh, mesh so it's not uh, messing with the microphone. Yeah, you can hear how windy it is out here. Woo okay. It's plenty roomy. Again, I'm not a big guy, five foot seven, average proportions, uh, but even at my highest reach, I can't quite reach the gear loft up above me. <clears throat> Maybe I need to angle that a bit. So, it's still a few inches away from me. If you're a tall guy, you could probably reach up to the uh, gear loft laying down, but yeah, it's uh, within easy reach. So. Uh, it's wide enough if you stay off the match. Give it a try here. Oh, yeah. It's quite a bit of uh, light coming through airspace beneath the edge of the fly. Uh, I've got it staked out, but not really tight. Uh, it's just, you know, staked at the four corners, uh, one on each end, and then the sides for the vestibules. But, you know, this would be uh, an airy enough tent for uh, summertime and late spring, early fall camping, but uh, beyond that, I think it might get a little chilly. <coughs> but you know, hey, that's what sleeping bags are for, right? It's windy out here. Watching a little uh, Netflix, and uh, the tent is Moving around. Here it ripped. I had a downburst just a second ago. I didn't have the camera running, and uh, the tent was lifting up. It was going up. They have three or four different colors of these uh, tents. They've got a uh, Blue, orange, green. I can't remember if they had a yellow or not. But I've already got an orange tent, so I figured, hey, I'll get this one green try it out. A little more stealthy for being in the woods. There it is, and it's getting lifted up. And some downbursts coming down and hitting the ground and lifting back up. Wow. We have a wind advisory going on in, uh, until later tonight. They're saying 35 mile per hour gusts or higher. Forecast is showing a 30% chance of uh, rain and thunderstorm, 5 to 6 o'clock. 
It's 4.43 right now, so I've got about 20 minutes before this is supposed to do anything. But the radar doesn't show anything uh, really immediately this way. It's looking kind of cleared out. So there might not be any more rain to test out the tent uh, on this little adventure. Radar loop looks like it's pretty clear, just windy behind this front. Anyway, back to Netflix. And then I'm also following up on my tent torture test. Uh, <laughs> this is the Hike and Bike Zion uh, 2P. Uh, and it has been sitting out here for a week now, in the rain, a week and a day. I think I brought it out here Saturday. Uh, so, yeah. pardon my chaos in the backyard here. Man, like I said, we had some serious winds. Uh, it <laughs> ripped roof slats off of this little playhouse and everything. We had uh, some pretty crazy 50 plus mile an hour winds for a few days. Um, anyway, so this uh, seems to have uh, fared well. I took a peek inside it earlier. Uh, you can still see water beating up on the top of it. We had some rain overnight, but now it's clear. And I took a peek in here earlier and it is still dry as a bone. Sorry for the camera work here. I'm trying to maneuver with one hand. Uh, it's a little uh, earthy smelling in here. Uh, we have just a couple of little tiny drips here. A um, little bit of water on the uh, sleeping pad, uh, but that's from condensation that has built up inside the fly you can see up here uh, so overall I think uh, this tent has done pretty well you know, a couple of little drips uh, here and there for being out here in a, in a full week uh, there's no water pooled up on the floor uh, so yeah for a hundred dollar tent or a little over a hundred dollars I think this is a good entry-level tent for people to do uh, backpacking or moto camping or whatever uh, so yeah